Well, I'm feeling very lucky today. Um, this is number six cylinder on, on the CBX. And uh, I just felt it and it was tight. Um, you would expect it to be loose, but obviously who's ever been in here before um, doesn't know what they're doing. And uh, I feel very, very lucky as these bearings haven't spun as they were tight. Um, and the journal is in perfect condition. It measures perfect uh, and I'm shocked that that hasn't overheated and uh, caused the scoring on, on the journal or for those uh, those bearings to spin. So yes, yeah, feeling like a very lucky chap today. So anyway, we've well, got to remove the rest of these, uh, these uh, big ends and we'll see where we get to. Actually, this is number four here. It's a bit difficult to do this whilst I'm... Um, whilst I'm trying to show this to you, but actually, I think you can see that there. It doesn't look as though it's a big end problem, it looks like it's a little end, but this is the first time I've experienced problems with a little end on a CBX, um, to that extent. So I think that that's where the problem was. But anyway, as I was coming this far, I'm glad I carried on, because otherwise this motor would have been shot had it run with that bearing as it was, and as tight as it was. So, uh, yeah, all in a good cause to save another one of these uh, old girls. Uh, morning, everybody. Um, moving on from yesterday of stripping this uh, CBX down, I was really, just really going through these pistons and rods. Um, and uh, this is off number one cylinder. And I must admit, on first sight, it can be a little bit uh, uh, distorted that actually this rod looked bent. Um, so what I've got actually here is, is something I use. So I've got a, a good con rod, uh, which I know to be in good condition, and it's a gold standard. So I, I use this as my, my test basis. And what I've, what I've machined up here is a, a spigot, which is 36 millimeters diameter here, which gives a good fit into the, the gold standard. And this part of the, the spigot here is machined to 35.995. So it's basically 2,000 clearance on here. So that's the tolerance that I've set. So I put the, the spigot into the known bearing, put the gudgeon pin in, and then sit the rod over the top. Now if the rod doesn't go on easily, then we know we've got a problem. Um, this one actually is sticking. Let's just, just turn it around the other way. I did test this earlier, so I know it works. Oh, there we go. Right, okay. Just typical Mur Murphy's Law when you're videoing. But we can see there, that's in, in the median of the clearance. So I'm happy that this rod is uh, is in good condition. Actually, let's just turn it over and make sure that I wasn't doing something stupid. No, there we go. So that's a perfect fit. So that's my little jig for testing con rods uh, to see if they're bent. Yeah, I've, I, I've probably got four or five now, which uh, which I've replaced, which have been bent through the, the years that I've been uh, rebuilding these motors. Um, obviously, as this this diameter here fits uh, any Honda CB series, uh, the, the the 900s and the uh, 1100s, you just need to use one of your gudgeon pins uh, to to uh, to fix up here and, and check it. Anyway, I thought that might be useful for those of you who want to check for a bent rod. Um, I've sort of jumped ahead a little bit, and uh, I've removed the uh, the cam the uh, primary chain tensioner here, which is only three bolts. Uh, just be aware of the um, of, of the filter here and the gaskets that sit on the feed to the uh, the, uh, the tensioner, and also the spring and the plunger that sits in there. So three bolts, and that comes out. Um, next thing is to remove the gear on the primary shaft, which is a 27 millimeter nut. Um, sorry, I don't have a, a one for my torque gun, so I've had to use an ordinary socket on there, but it's not too tight anyhow. Uh, Honda recommends you use a, a tall locking tool here. Actually, all you need to do with a with an impact gun is just hold the crank like that, move it in, and this uh, this beastie here just spins straight off. So that's the first step on here. So we're just going to move ahead now and uh, and remove uh, this primary gear, which just comes straight off. Just be what be careful of the washer that sits behind. So. Uh, when I do these engines, I've got a nice tray that I stick in under, under my bench here um, and I segment everything as I'm pulling the engine apart. So all the, all the bolts for the crankcases go in one container, head goes in another container. So when you come to reassemble the motor, 
you know where all the bolts are but and also more importantly it's when I actually can because I do my own zinc plating so I zinc plate the bolts so it just means that I can zinc plate all the bolts for the uh, the crankcase and get those done so that's it so now we're going to remove the lock on the on the primary shaft so uh, so we can get that removed and move to the next level so once I've got this out, so it's only three the three bolts here once I get that out, I'll come back and, uh, and we can move to the next level. Okay, so I've now removed the three, uh, three bolts on the locking ring and uh, I've extracted the, uh, the, the primary shaft itself. Um, you may need to tap it with a hammer from this side to come out. It will spring out, but it will require a tap to get it out. Now, once this is out, we're in a position now to to basically remove um, both the the, uh, the starter gear and the uh, I'm trying to do this now one-handed and the uh, the, the uh, primary shaft gear as well. So that's out now. We'll have to line that back up when we put it back in, but we'll cover that off um, when we come back to that particular part. So now you can see now primary chain's free. I can remove this crank and inspect it in the next further detail. So, uh, so yeah, so that's it. So we'll catch up soon and uh, we'll go through the, the, uh, the inspection of the rest of the components. Okay, so this morning we're really going to be going through um, the crankshaft, the measuring of the crankshaft and the bearing selection from the measurements that you take off the crankshaft. So I just really want to wind back a bit. So when Honda created the factory service manual, it's based around the, the factory ground journals that are marked on the crankshaft here, both on both sides. On this side, they're they're, ground, they're they're engraved for the big end bearings, and then when you turn over the page, they're ground here for the main bearings. But the fact of the matter is that 42 years on and miles put on the bike, these these basically these here are relevant, and you need a micrometer to go through and measure the the, the bearing journals both for reality and for wear. Now I'm not going to cover that off because uh, that will be covered in the full video but all I'm trying to do is highlight here on the, the the name of the game is to try and get to a situation where we get between 35 and 45 microns which is the optimum oil clearance to give you a balance between oil pressure and reducing the friction on the crank by having the bearings uh, less than that. But we can see here the oil clearance service limit is 0.8 thou or three thousandths of an inch, which is, uh, yeah, in engineering terms, that you can get a horse and cart through that. So we're just trying to get it back as near we can to factory as possible. So what I'm going to do is cover off a number of things. The first thing to do is now the, the fixed things that don't wear are obviously the the, 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 the journals within the, the inline board crankcase, which can be seen on the crankshaft here and engraved here. I'll, I'll put a photo up for that. And the other one is the ID code. So obviously the inside of the, 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 uh, the conrods don't wear because the bearing takes the wear. So we know that those two dimensions aren't going to change no matter how many years the bike's done. The only thing that's going to change are the bearings on the crankshaft. So I just really want to focus on the two things here. One is the ID code on the crankshaft and the other one is the ID code on the, uh, uh, on the conrod. And you'll see how you select that when we come back to the spreadsheet. So I'm just going to flip on... Okay, so I'm now going to run through um, the measuring of the, the crank um, for uh, the purposes of bearing selection. Um, first thing I do is I run a strip along here and I mark this M1, which is main bearing 1, B1, big end 1, M2, main bearing 2, big end 2, main bearing 3, and so forth right to the end. And then all I do is write down the, the last three digits. It's going to be 35.98 whatever. So in this case, I've already measured this bearing here, which comes out at uh, 982. So that's, uh, that's within spec. Uh, main bearing one is 978. And big end bearing one is 978. But before we get to the measuring, I've just done those two just to check things out. Uh, what I do is I calibrate my mic... My, my, uh, micrometer with a, a slip gauge and I'm sure everyone's not got a slip gauge but the problem you have is that if, it, if your uh, micrometer is not calibrated then what you're measuring isn't going to be calibrated either 
So I set the the, uh, the calibration at 40, which is only four millimeters from the um, from the bearing size. Um, what I also do is I use two micrometers just to cross check and make sure that my micrometer is in calibration. When you measure the bearings, you've got to measure them in, in two axes, the X and the Y. So we're just going to measure this main bearing here. So I just calibrated it so it's coming back down. So let's again. It's my eyeglass because my eyes aren't what they used to be. So I'm now measuring that at 985. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure that in the other axis as well. And that's uh, 983, so it's two microns. Just double check again. Yeah, which is 983. So we're going to measure that down and put that down as 983. Three. So the whole point is you measure all the bearings across the crank, starting at number one. Make sure you've got your crank the right, right way round on the CVX so that you'll remember that the 17mm nut is on the right hand side sat on the bike. So this is number one and this is number six. Okay, so the second part now we've, uh, we've washed the uh, oil waves in the crank is to check for runner. As I said, really, this should have been done uh, first, but uh, the crank was a known crank out of uh, at the bike I took apart. Um, so on, on the CBX, when you're running it in the uh, in V-blocks, you have to put a shell bearing in here because uh, this diameter is bigger than the journal. So uh, you've got to do that. So we've got it in two V-blocks on my surface plate here. Now I've checked this, this, uh, this crank uh, before I started filming and I was a little bit surprised because it's running out more than I would expect but it is just within limit in fact it is within limit so it's 0 0.005 on a complete revolution and you have to half that so actually this crank is running out by about one thousandth of an inch um, but over the complete cycle that is obviously uh, 0 0.005 and that's as per the Honda manual so this is actually um, a thou within tolerance according to the manual um, so uh, so yeah this is good to go but uh, yeah I have to say a bit surprised normally I, I expect to see probably about half a thou run out on here but I uh, just thought I'd share that with you so that's how you check the run out uh, on a, a CBX and a four inline four or any crank come to that so uh, there we go